Hey, what's up everybody? Back with another breakdown video for February where I'll be talking about what games I played and by my surprise and probably yours, it hasn't been a very good month when it comes to completion. Still, I want to talk about what games I played, what new games I tried out and I want to share them with you by giving you a rundown of their reviews and my personal thoughts on them. So that being said, let's get into the Hello and welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Vasha and this is Stellplay. And in today's video, I'll be talking everything about the games that I played from trailers to games completed and games that I didn't manage to complete. Yet I have a good overall view of what the games are all about. And I can share my honest opinion with you. These are games that are basically in my backlog. Some of the games I won via Steam gifts, uh, through giveaways or other games that I tried out as trailers. So I wanted to share with you in depth, like do a monthly review. So if you're interested in this kind of videos, feel free to subscribe and turn on the post notification. And of course, if by the end of this video, you enjoy the content, smashing that like button really helps a lot. That being said, let's talk about the games that I played in February. So in the beginning of the month, I started with Ice Age Scratch Nutty Adventure. It is a platformer game that I won via Steam gifts and because I've watch the Ice Age, this character particularly was very familiar to me. Now, I did watch it a while back when I was much younger, but still, it is a memorable character that I really enjoyed from the Ice Age world, and it was really interesting to try out this game. Now, this game is having mixed reviews on Steam, and for a very good reason. I feel like this platformer game is very bare minimum when it comes to the things that you can do. Platform Platformers and puzzles are very simplistic and if you are type of player that maybe have enjoyed different kind of platformers or you have a couple of specific ones that you might have tried that are 3D platformers, you might find this game very simplistic, very easy to go and perfect for somebody that have never played a video game before or for somebody that is underage. This game is more likely tailored for that. I find that a lot of the times the combat felt repetitive, puzzles felt repetitive, and just hunting for collectibles overall felt really, really dull. You do have a world by world and chapter by chapter system that you can go ahead and collect. And you have a couple of elements that make this a more likely a collectathon platformer because you're collecting this nuts and gems so that you can unlock different abilities. You do have three abilities that you unlock throughout the whole game, which uh, you will be using them through throughout the missions and some areas will be unlocked for you only if you are going to get the crystal nut at the end of each chapter. It is pretty much a metrovania if you think about it. You cannot progress in some areas and you have to go back and revisit them later on. Personally, I don't find that an interesting thing because of the fact that repetition is very predominant here. There's nothing like different varieties of enemies that you encounter or map changing way too much and that creates quite a dull experience whatsoever. I did review this game as bad. Bad for me is like 4 out of 10 if you are familiar much more with that kind of system. Honestly, I wish that I enjoyed this game much more due to the fact that I really like the animation and I'm really bummed out that I started the month in such a poor fashion. Still, my hopes for the upcoming games that I will talk about are a little bit much more promising. So let's get into the next game. The next game that I played, and this is a demo or a trial, depending on how you want to call it, it's Skull and Bones. Yeah, I tried this game because I wanted to see what's it all about, and trying out the trial gives you eight hours to try out and see what this game is all about. And by my surprise, this game is not as bad as a lot of people have been talking about on social media and all over YouTube. I do think that it has its flaws, and I do question the 
the price point for this game but overall i really can say that i enjoy this game i played assassin's creed black flag a couple of years back when i did a marathon where i played all the assassin's creed from assassin's creed 3 and up to assassin's creed odyssey and i enjoyed the game for what it was but when i look at skull and bones i could not necessarily compare it entirely especially for the fact that my experience with skull and bones was quite pleasant there were some elements that were different in a way or another and the visuals were really standing out for me i think it's a gorgeous looking game and it's overlooked by many of course we don't have many pirate games out there that are focused on action combat so this game can scratch that itch if you're looking for something like that now i don't understand necessarily the triple a and the quadruple a kind of thing i really don't see the difference between the two maybe the details across the world but i've seen other double a and triple a games that really do an incredible job at delivering visuals and this game really didn't stand out for me in that regard still i can say that it's a beautiful game and has beautiful attention to details with outfits and ship customization although it does focus a little bit on microtransactions so if you're looking for an experience where you can spend less and you know enjoy the game for what it is and get whatever you want to get it's a little bit tough on that edge especially the fact that this game costs 50 pounds and 70 dollars i would consider picking this game up if ever it comes to steam on a much more higher discount i think it's still worth picking up and playing with your friends i played with armea this game and that was mainly the reason why i picked it up and i really really enjoyed it for what it was and i'm, I'm looking forward to try out more when as i said it comes to steam and maybe i decide to make a full purchase armea on the other side enjoyed this game she thought that it was not as bad as a lot of people were claiming and by her surprise she enjoyed it quite a lot she picked it up she bought it and played for a lot more than i did i do not know if she is continuing to play it in the next coming months or years but for sure she decided to try it out and she wasn't disappointed and kind of says that this game is more tailored for a niche based audience another game that i tried to play as more like a demo although i do have the game it's still in early access and to be honest i didn't even thought about trying it out but i did get a free copy from a solo developer who made this game and this game is called champion of andia it is an action arena combat arena very simplistic at this point in time and whatever trailer you will see on the screen is obviously gonna display an early phase of the game there's much to go into this game and a lot of the things are being done by just one person so things are now moving completely fast the arena still feels a little bit slow in my opinion the combat is not well flushed and visuals for the characters is not appealing in my opinion i do wish more people probably worked on this one to really enhance the visuals and i'm curious to see where is this project going i don't have much to say about the game because i only played for an hour and i only tried a couple of things until i unlocked additional armors and i fought a couple of waves it is bare at this point in time and i'm looking forward to see if the developer is gonna make the game a lot more smoother still if you're looking for something to try out that is more arena based like that keep an eye out for this one if ever in the future if the developer is going to improve it and make it much more better as it is if not that's all i wanted to share about this game and the last game was just cause 2 i managed to play this game for more than a hundred hours to that point and i took several breaks in order for me to be able to play other games and enjoy other games and trim down my backlog as much as possible unfortunately i didn't manage to complete it in february and i only did it in early march and to be honest i really enjoyed the game as itself but there were a couple of things that i personally didn't like when it comes to completion this game really requires a lot of grind and although the map is astonishingly beautiful for what it is when this game came out a more than a decade ago and i was surprised for those visuals and how expansive and large the map felt although there's a lot of things when it comes to completion uh, that i've had problems with and i feel like the whole month sluggish farming grinding kind of month where i personally didn't feel like i fully enjoyed it and oftentimes i thought to myself why am i doing this why am i pushing myself to get 100 completion for this game luckily 
I only had to complete 75% of the map, although I still thought it was a long and tedious way to do that. And by getting 100% on a lot of locations, fairly boring to do. And at some point, I even kicked back, put some music on, and I started doing it without even considering about anything about the game. And that is not a good thing when it comes to completion. Of course, if you want to play this game for what it is and just beat the story and whatnot, I think you might enjoy it. A lot of people who played Just Cause 3 and 4 really go back and talk fondly about Just Cause 2. So I think it is quite a game that a lot of people like, but it does have its flaws and I felt them. Other than that, the story was not very strong in my opinion. It tried to take this kind of a James Bond kind of appeal to it where you are a special agent called Scorpio trying to take down Kingpin on the Panau Island and you ally yourself with three factions and you're trying to liberate the Panau Island and yeah I, I thought that it had a promising and interesting thing. I did like the things that you were able to do and by the end of playing for more than 120 hours I can say that I became a master at maneuvering with my parachute and using my grappling hook in order to traverse rather than using vehicles. Speaking about vehicles another achievement that you needed to get for this game was to get 104 cars that you needed to drive and find them uniquely and it was a tedious task but luckily I did that without even noticing by getting to 90% while just simply playing the game for what it was just trying out vehicles and stuff like that was fairly natural although I had to follow a couple of guides to find a couple of remote vehicles that luckily they were displayed in the game information where it would tell you what is the name of the vehicle and what's left for you to find. I thought that that is quite useful and good. I know that this game has some issues when it comes to actually 100%ing the game in the game because it has its own achievements in the game. I did only the achievements for Steam so once you get everything that Steam requires you're good to go the game is considered 100% but if you do want to get 100% for the entire map there is some issues as far as I know or you can use yourself a mod where it identifies what location you haven't got and that will help you out to get to 100% completion and yeah that's overall my look for the game when it comes to review I gave my verdict that this game is good that's a 7 out of 10 for me I really thought that it did good in some areas and it was very pleasant in the visual section in my opinion I did enjoy the robust things that were in the game and to be honest I'm looking forward to try out Just Cause 3 because of the gliding and stuff like that and um, yeah I thought it's gonna be much more interesting and I hope that I will enjoy it much more than I did Just Cause 2. As I said I completed this game in March so I'll be talking less about this game because I will have other games to talk about then. So that's all I wanted to share let me know in the comments what do you think about the games that I played have you tried some of them let me know in the comments I would really like to hear your thoughts on this one and if you have anything that you agree or disagree feel free to drop them of course in the comments let's create discussions talk about this kind of games because I like to have these breakdowns every month where I talk about what I played the month before of course this is March so I'll be making in April for March and I'll be talking about what games I played I think it's a much more exciting month so I'm looking forward to share with you all what I have played and I am currently playing playing and uh, for sure I have a lot of things to talk about in the next month hopefully this month hasn't been that disappointing as I've been quite disappointed in the games that I managed to complete nevertheless there's a lot to look forward for March so I'm, I'm looking forward to share with you guys in the next video so that's all I wanted to share thank you very much for watching and as always take care stay safe and happy gaming